Hey everybody, welcome to Tape Puller Tuesday, where we're going to, every Tuesday, we're going to look at a new tape puller, do an unboxing. Well, no we're not, we're actually just going to do it today. Uh, my uh, friend DJ, I'll, we'll put a link in his, for his channel, he does Modem Mondays, you should go check it out, very high quality videos, unlike these. Uh, he was interested a while back in one of my paper tape pullers, so I want to do an unboxing. Uh, this is kind of overdue. Um, I want to do an unboxing so he knows what he's getting and can bail out if he wants. Anyway, here we have a World War II era BOMA Model 8F paper tape puller. And from the date, December 15th, 1944. Now this is what we call export packed, and originally this would have been in a big wooden crate. Now, uh, the wooden crate is long gone, I never had the crate. And yeah, a lot, of, uh, a lot of surplus dealers got rid of the crates, because World War II crates are, are gigantic. They're things to behold, they're wonderful things. You can really tell the quality of wood was so much better back in... Uh, the old days. Uh, I've opened um, some crates from World War II and you're cutting into them with a sawzall or whatever and you're just knocked over by the uh, by the smell. They, they still, it's still nice fresh sappy wood inside. It's, it's amazing. Anyway, no crate but we have here export packed. So we have a 8F paper tape puller. These things were used to well, pull paper tape, because paper tape, well, we tend to think of it as a computer thing, but actually, it started out in the, uh, the Morse code world. I'm going to open up the, uh, the tar paper here. And, uh, when you wanted to basically record Morse code... You inked it onto paper tape. Let's get a little more centered. You had something called an inker that you'd hook up to your receiver, and as it received the dashes and dots, it would literally kind of draw them onto a paper tape, and then you could, well, read them with your eyeballs. Now, sometimes you use these when you were doing something called burst mode in transmission. Oop, just knocked the thing there. Where you're having a machine do the, the keying of the transmitter at some remote site or wherever because you could you could key uh, World War II transmitters at like 500 words a minute or something something insane. Well, nobody can can uh, can copy that by ear. So you what you would do then is ink it onto paper tape and then you could actually look at it and figure out what what was sent. It was just a way of getting a lot more throughput. Anyway, you can see, got a outer cardboard box here, which is going to be a little difficult here. It's maybe glued shut. Oh, this paper, or just uh, duct tape. This this here is actually some, some kind of the original duct tape. It's uh, it was a World War II thing. And you can see, yeah, it's kind of dried out, but, you know, what do you expect? So, in any case, when you had uh, the, the, the paper tape keyers and inkers, well, you know, they'd be shooting out tape, and you didn't want it to go lying around on the floor or whatever. You wanted to well, roll it up. So you used one of these. This is a BOMA. They were, uh, they were one of the big companies in this business. And, uh... It would basically just wind the tape in a nice controlled fashion. And, uh, well, here's packing card. Get rid of that. Into a nice, well, basically a roll that you could then store, read, whatever, and it wouldn't make a big mess on the floor. So, okay, inside we have a, a uh, foil, um, a sealed foil thing, and you can see here, I don't know if you can read that message there, but basically vapor vapor and moisture uh, um, proof packing. Eh, well, you know, after 70 years or whatever, we'll see. <laughs> I 
a lot of times you open these things up and stuff is perfect. This foil sometimes works great. Well, we'll see with this. So far, so good. The box is quite nice. Inner box. So DJ, ready to bail out yet? <laughs> More packing cardboard. Oh, and what do we have here? Protex Sorb. Yep, it's silica gel. Do not eat. Wow, they used a lot with these things. This stuff is handy. It's uh, quite reusable. You just bake it and uh, uh, in a nice, uh, you know, not very hot oven. But you just bake it, drive the moisture out, then you keep using it. It keeps things nice and dry, so I'm going to keep this stuff. Oops, I just did that. Sorry. Almost like little sandbags. Okay, we got a first part here. And it's the arm with a little package here. Open that up. Well, like I said, let's open it up. Okay. There we go. I think this is one of the, supposed to be one of those knots you just very easily pull the right string and it comes off, and I don't think it was tied tonight. Right. So we got a little bag here. Cute little bag. And, uh, yeah, I don't think this was tied right. Well, in any case, we can we can cheat. Ah, there we go. I think that did it. We have our uh, a belt, and we have a little bag of screws here. Put that to the side, and this is the arm where the reel goes. More packing cardboard. More packing cardboard. They sure like packing cardboard. Yep, and more, and more, and more. Okay, these pieces here. Here we have the reel. This is the take up reel. Two pieces of the tape cup, take up reel. And uh, we'll show you how that goes together in a minute. You can see they're uh, about, about eight, nine inches in diameter. Now, normally this was meant for, for paper tape that, you know, we, we tend to think of paper tape as one inch. This is, I think, the five eighths inch stuff. However, I think you can pretty much vary the width here. Uh, so you could probably modify this to do one, one, uh, one inch paper tape for, for you guys doing teletype stuff with mini computers and stuff like that. But, uh, the standard back then, I think, was there was a 3 8 inch standard, maybe, and a 5 8 inch standard. And here. These are fun. Wrap the newspaper. Get my knife out. Try not to injure myself. <laughs> Vintage newspaper. Yep, you get oil. How good it is, I don't know. Eh, it's probably still okay. However, these days I would probably use a more modern lubricant. More packing, more packing. And finally, we've got the ba basic unit here. You can see from the tags, Loma Tape Puller, model 8F, serial 1353, got a Bodine electric motor on it, 
standard 110 AC. Well, back then it was 110. Of course, now it's 120. Interesting, we got a little, little tiny little wooden block there. I don't know if you could see that to separate this pincher. We'll get that out of there. You know what? Through the magic of YouTube, we're going to do this. Here is the completed one. Let's see if I can get this thing down. There we go. Maybe. That's a little better. So this is what the thing is supposed to look like. You can see I've uh, put the Put the belt on. Little cord there. And essentially, yeah, it's just it's a nice slow speed motor. You do have a speed control on the side here. Uh, it says fast and slow, a little hard to see. And uh, this, I think, also might be a speed control. I'm not sure. Uh, or this might be tensioning. But yeah, essentially, you just, it is gives just a nice gentle rotational force and uh, well you wind your tape on there to get your tape off just unscrew this bobbin sort of deal here and you can take your tape off get that a little better in the frame there like I said I think you could probably modify this thing relatively easily to uh, except other widths of tape because it kind of looks like it uh you know you, it looks like the reel certainly could and you know maybe even these rollers here yeah look at that i never noticed this before but yeah it looks like the uh these little bobbins here you can adjust so there we go there's an unboxing now the story behind these is i bought a pallet of them and they're all new from a surplus dealer called Electro Sales in Boston, and uh, they're long gone now. This I think they finally gave gave up the ghost a few years ago, but I got these about ten years ago. Bought a whole pallet of these things, thinking, "Oh man, these are great." The people buy them like crazy. Paid three and a half dollars a piece for them. They're all new like this. I think I've sold three of them. <laughs> so, kind of a bad, bad decision on my part. So, I don't mind, I don't mind, uh, you know, unboxing them like this. Uh, you know, eventually DJ's going to get one, maybe whether he likes it or not. Um, the rest I may end up scrapping because, you know, I, I, I think I've sold like three or four of them out of the 25 or so that I had purchased. And, you know, basically no one wants these. Um, I, every so often I'll put one up on eBay and uh, it flops. So these things are heavy. That's one of the problems. No, no one wants to ship these things. So, yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's a shame, but you can't save it all. They are a nice thing. They're, they're Look at that brand spanking new, shiny paint and everything. Uh, nice Bodine motor. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll uh, see if I can salvage the motors because that's a very good Bodine made good stuff. I think, are they still around? They may still be around. So there you have it. It's kind of a special unboxing uh, by request for DJ. And like I said, go and uh, check out his channel. He does modems. He's the modem guy. And uh, check out his, his uh, videos. Watch them all. Like them and, all, and share them and all that. And hey, why not like and share these video, this video as well. All right, well, that's about it, and uh, I don't know if any of you crazy people really want one of these things. I probably have about 15 left. Um, uh, I guess send me a message. Now, like I said, these things are heavy. Uh, they, they, they don't ship too well. It's, it's shipping across the country would, 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 would be bad news. Um, uh, so, well, in any case, DJ, if you uh, feel the need to have a... a Boma 8F paper tape puller. Here's one. Uh, I, I, you can still have one new in the box, and you can have the fun of unboxing one as well. All right. I'll see you guys later. Bye now.